Greetings dear friends, old and new, Dragon here once again. If it's your first time finding the channel, then do please remember to click that red button and subscribe. Back with another Eastern Heroes magazine preview. This is the fantastic issue three, the biggest so far, a bumper 120 pages. Not yet hit the streets. Hopefully should be out later this month. Rick was very, very kind to send me up a copy so that I could make a video review for you to see what you are in store for. But there is a lot to get through, so we're going to jump into it. This is the collector's issue, which came with a little postcard version of the cover by the wonderful Creaky 99 Art and Cheryl and Ja, along with a poster with the alternate colour choice that Rick had potentially thought of for the cover, but I think blew one out. So there is the kind of black and white background version that can be hung up on your wall. Pretty awesome. And the wonderful reissue of the Eastern Heroes Video Magazine Volume 2 transferred onto DVD, which will sit beautifully alongside my Volume 1. Awesome. So those goodies, if you can still get a hold of the collector's set, not too sure if you can at this point, all very nice and well worth having. So let's get into the magazine itself. Once again, our cover here by the wonderful Creaky 99 Art and Cheryl and Ja, featuring the boys. Uh, so Scott Adkins, Lauren Avedon, Lee A. Charles, Mark Strange and James Bennett, who are all kind of interviewed by Rick for his Sparta section. This is Sparta. Well, actually, this is not Sparta. This is Eastern Heroes. Let's get into it. So again, first page, we get a wonderful piece of art by Steve Morris and Cheryl and Ja. This is like originally been created for Scott Adkins. So I'm fighting Tony Ja. Pretty cool and owned by Scott Adkins himself. And we get Rick's editorial section and our contents page. First up, Toby Russell has given us a, an obituary section for Pope Harapog, the, the Thai actor, stroke director, who I think started out in Bruce Lee's The Big Boss and then went on to have a pretty long-standing career himself as an actor, stuntman and director in Thailand and who sadly passed 2019 from cancer. So Toby's put together a nice little tribute to him there. Then Ron, my mate Ron from London, aka London Ron, the handsome devil, has got two articles this issue, overachiever that he is. First up on the Fighting Spirit Film Festival, and when he kind of runs through the festival that's just happened this year, and then also a little bit of the history of the festival over the last couple of years, along with some wonderful pictures. Didn't they look dapper? And he's also given us a second little roundup on the premiere of Raging Fire, uh, which can be screened as part of the London East Asia Film Festival. Both of these I would have loved to head down to London for, but work has just been too, too busy the last few months. But it's great. I can live vicariously through Ron and he can let me know all the show, all the screenings that I missed. Very cool. Then we get the first of several sequel articles. So this is things that had started in previous issues. If you haven't yet got your previous issues, you still can jump onto the Eastern Heroes website and track down issues one and two. But this is the second part of Michael Worth's article, Bruce Lai and I, where he speaks to the most famous of all the Bruce Ploitation actors, Bruce Lai. And pretty great in-depth article with some great photos from his career, uh, some cover art from some of the movies. It's a really quite a deep dive. This article has been a lot of fun. I have a couple of mates, thinking of you, Jason, um, who are huge Bruce Ploitation fans. And so it's really nice kind of seeing this article put together. I think a lot of this sort of stuff is going to make its way eventually into the Bruce Ploitation Bible that he is working on just now. Then we get our regular Art Vengeance section, this time round dominated by Shaw Brothers, which makes me incredibly happy. And all these pieces by the wonderful Ken Lee, I think born and raised in London, um, but Hong Kong parents, so he'd kind of presumably grown up with a lot of these movies around, and he's done a great little tribute to Lao Garong, my favourite director and one of my favourite actors. Great seeing him in a few different poses from various movies. Mad Monkey Kung Fu at the front there, Legendary Weapons of China at the back. Awesome. Then we get three glorious kind of little close-up portraits, one of Kara Wei, one of Angela Mao, and one of Cheng Pei Pei. Everybody will recognise the Naked Killer cover there, but I think most of his work is in black and white pencils, colour pencils and biro, but pretty stunning. These sections are a real treat. There's some, some of you are insanely talented. It's great seeing the artwork every month. Then we get another fantastic collection. This time around is by Andrew P. Bavel. He's based out of America, I think. Not too sure where in the States, but wonderful collection of Bruce Lee action figures. And he goes through his collection here. Some pretty glorious pictures of figures that I never knew existed. Pretty cool. Then we jump into Dream and Sword by Martin Sandinson, which is looking at three classics from Taiwanese wuxia pain cinema, which I'm not that familiar with, but if you're a fan of Taiwanese kung fu movies, this one will be a treat. I only really kind of know King Hu on the, the kind of Taiwanese side of wuxia movies, so I know Touch of Zen and I know Dragon in 
but this is looking at three movies that I was not familiar with, so kind of really quite a treat diving into these. And I've all ended up going onto my watch list. So he explores Love and Sword, he explores Sword of Justice, and A Sword Named Revenge. And some great examples of the posters for those three. Intriguing. Then we get another entry from Hector Martinez, this time around looking at his uh, Brandon Lee collection. Previously we'd seen some of his incredibly extensive Bruce Lee collection and he wrote about his encounter with Wang Yu, but this time around he's diving into the area of his collection dedicated to Bruce Lee's son Brandon uh, with a whole bunch of movie props from The Crow and a bunch of merchandise, original poster art. Very, very cool. Then another sequel this time round is Paul Dre's Jackie Chan from Cub Tiger to Vanguard section. And this is still kind of quite focused on his early career. So we're still pre some of his Bruce Lee appearances when he was working as a stuntman there. So still kind of quite focused on his early, early, early career. But that's how in depth Paul is diving. Very cool. And he also turns it in part to a tribute to two of Jackie's co-stars who we lost recently. So the wonderful Roy Haran, everyone will know from Snake and Eagle Shadow and from Game of Death 2. And Dean Jack who unfortunately both passed quite recently. But that's kind of really dedicated this article with that, I think, to Roy Haran, the wonderful Roy Haran. So great, so we get some original posters from The Young Tiger, from Fist of Anger. And I think that's going to be ongoing, so I'll look forward to his next part, next issue. Then we get another sequel, uh, Cinema of Hate, for a few bashers more. This is Andy Smith continuing his look at some of the lesser-known, more rough-around-the-edges kung fu brawlers. This time round, he does The Magnificent Boxer from 1973, he does Deadly Fists from 72, Tough Guy from 1972, Jewel of Karate, for a Taiwanese movie from 1970, uh, The Black Belt from 73. That's the last of his little article, but again, with some great poster art for all of these and some stills from the films. Pretty cool. If anybody who's picked up the Basher box recently, this will be music to your ears. Then we get The Triumph of Kung Fu Arts Part 3. This is Alan Donkin's look. Uh, movie poster collectors and again he find, manages to kind of find some wonderful collections and some wonderful collectors each time he does one of these roundups this term round is no exception we get james marshall a bristolian living in thailand and his experience collecting across there then we get marcus popella um, i think based out of germany and his collection some pretty wonderful german posters some german Shaw brothers posters then we get rio sato uh, based out of japan so some great japanese posters uh, we get our very own Mike Leader from the UK, but as we all know, based in Hong Kong and some of Mike's collection. Mike seems to be constantly busy. Um, no, I have no idea how he finds the time to hit the streets and go collecting posters, but I think he's been doing it for a very long time. Very cool. And Jared King, who's also kind of based in the States, and some of his collection uh, looking like Ringo Lamb at the top there. Some kind of new wave Hong Kong crime thriller posters. Very cool to see. And then... We jump into the main cover article. So this is the Sparta issue section, and this is all handled by Rick. So he speaks to Lauren Avedon, who people know from No Retreat, No Surrender. He speaks to Lee A. Charles, uh, working on The Expendables and a bunch of other things. Mark Strange from Ip Man 4, and from Rupture, James Bennett, a student of Dan Inesato, and of course Scott Adkins, um, from so many things, but most people will be very aware he's going to be in the next John Wick movie, but I can always remember him from the old Ninja movies, and from Triple Threat, from Avengement, uh, from The Accident Man, from The Debt Collector, and proving to be really one of, of, kind of Britain's best martial artists on screen. Really, certainly, he, popularity is growing, and then how can I not mention Bjorka? Yeah, he is quite a legend. So a pretty deep dive article with him. And then we get into the first of our bad guy interviews this issue and some fantastic villains and henchmen. So first up is Al Leong's Hollywood Stories. This is by Al Leong himself, but helped out by Jason McNeil. Al, you will know from so, so many things. Uh, from Big Trouble in Little China, from Die Hard. He's the candy munching man in Die Hard. From Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, where he plays Genghis Khan. Uh, from Ghosts of Mars, from Cobra, from Twilight Zone. Fantastic, uh, really quite a legend and phenomenal screen presence, and kind of great seeing his reminiscences, his ah yeah, great seeing his recollections about all the movies that he has worked on, along with some great stills from his own archives. Fantastic. Then we get spotlight on the King of the Southern Fist. Uh, this is dedicated to Don Wong Tao, um, kind of who had been in a bunch of Shaw Brothers and Golden Harvest movies. 
and we get a lot of the poster art for his movies. People may know him from The Hot, The Cool and The Vicious, Disciple of Shaolin Master, Fatal Needles, Fatal Fists, and a full filmography for Wong Tao. Awesome stuff. Then King of the Kickers, a fantastic interview with Huang Zheng Li, uh, the villain from Drunken Master, from Snake and Eagle Shadow, from Invincible Armor, from Game of Death 2, from so many other things. One of the best kickers ever. Uh, this is by Ben Johnson. Some great um, stills from the, the Eastern Heroes archives about when he came over and visited the UK. And some pictures from his school. He's uh, still going strong, I believe. Awesome. Uh, Rick managing to survive an encounter with the man himself. Good stuff. And then we jump into a man called Someno. This is dedicated to Yukio Someno, who another Shaw Brothers regular. He's in a bunch of Shaw Brothers movies in the 60s and 70s. A Japanese actor and who would work both in Hong Kong and in Japan. I work alongside uh, Yosaki Kurata. Very cool. And so we get two stages to this. We get a transcribe from the uh, an interview conducted back in 2005 by Toby Russell. And then we also get a new updated interview by Simon Pritchard and both sit alongside each other very well. Very, very cool to see. Then we jump into the baddest bad guy of them all, an interview with Gerald Okamura, who I think of most again from Brig Tobin Lot China, but also in Blade and a bunch of other movies. He's had quite a long and pretty interesting career dating back to the 50s. And again, a bunch of stills from his own archives, a bunch of stills from some of the movies that he's appeared in. Still from Big Trouble in Little China. In fact, several from Big Trouble in Little China. Alongside the wonderful David Hasselhoff. And Wesley Snipes from Blade. Pretty cool. Then we get Jackie Chan, A Ghost Story. This is by Thurston Boos. And I think this is uh, looking at an interview that Jackie gave when he was on the wonderful celebrity talk show, TV show from Hong Kong, which I wish we had more episodes of available in this country. Anyone who picked up the erotic ghost story box set from 88 Films, there was one of those um, those full um, episodes on there. Um, but it was a show that was hosted by James Wong, Chow Lam and the writer Ni Kuang. It's really the main reason why I love watching that show. Ni Kuang is a gem. And Jackie Chan was on it, um, I believe, in the, I think in the mid-90s early to mid 90s. I'm um, not too sure exactly what he was promoting at the time, but when he was on there, he recounted his ghostly encounter in Korea. And so that's what Thurston is diving into here. So he's kind of exploring that episode particularly, which for many of us, given that it's impossible to track down that TV show and even harder to understand if you don't speak Cantonese, it's great kind of hearing some of the stories that were previously only spoken about on those. So yeah, this is a pretty great article exploring Jackie's encounter with ghosts in Korea. Great stuff. Then we get Kickboxer from Hell. It's by Ken Miller. And again, continuing his look into films from the IFD vaults. This time around getting into Zodiac Power 3, Kickboxer from Hell, which looks pretty cool. A lot of the poster art and some stills from the movie there. And then there is me, um, my Five Fingers of Discs article. Rick was very gracious to give me a little bit more space than normal, so I dive into it a lot this issue. We get into 88 Films' recent-ish release of Ricky O, the story of Ricky. I get into their release of The Chinese Boxer. Two wonderful releases, Double Shaw Brothers releases from the great guys at Spectrum Films. Eureka's Joe to the Death. And then a full review of the Shaw Scope Volume 1 box set, which is due later this month in December. Push back slightly, but come in very soon and well worth the wait. A preview of 88 Films' next big release for Christmas time, uh, the deluxe edition of Armour of God. We get an advert from our good friends over 88 Films for the Chinese Boxer. And we also have, excitingly, our very first competition. Uh, we're giving away a steelbook for Dragons Forever. The only way to enter is through the mag, so make sure you get yourself a copy. Instructions on how to enter are there. That's a glorious steelbook, this one here, which was very graciously donated by our mates over at 88. And that is it. That rounds out the bumper 120-page Eastern Heroes issue 3. Thank you very much for watching. Do please remember to enter my competition, the Bruce Lee Special. I'm pretty close to the end of that competition. If you haven't entered, please jump over and leave an entry for that because I'll be picking a winner very soon. And that is it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.